Hi, my name is Sorin Pradescu, Content Manager of Connect, and in this video I will be showing you the main features and settings of Beautify. Beautify is a full-screen image processing effect that improves real-time image quality by producing incredibly sharp and vivid scenes. The second version of Beautify is compatible with the standard and universal pipeline. When you buy Beautify 2, you have three versions included, for built-in, for post-processing version 2 and for the new universal pipeline. When you are done importing Beautify inside the project, you will get a folder like this one called Beautify and inside of this folder, as I told you before, you can choose the built-in option, the post-processing version 2 option and the universal pipeline option. For the purpose of this video, I am going to be choosing the built-in version and so I am going to select this and import it. And once the import process has been completed, you get all these folders here. You have a demos folder. You also have a documentation folder. And then you have three more folders, editor, resources, and scripts that are necessary for the Beautify asset to work properly. For the purpose of this video, I am going to be using Sally's home asset, which I have already imported inside the project. As you can see, this is the scene that we are going to be using. And the point of view that I have right now with my main camera is the best one for you to properly see the changes that we are going to do with Beautify inside our game. Getting the Beautify asset to start working in your project is very easy. The first thing that you will have to do is look for your main camera. I have mine here, I will select it and then I will go to the inspector panel and at the bottom in add component I will have to be looking for the Beautify script, I select it here. And as you can see, I already have my Beautify script added in the inspector panel and I can start making all the necessary changes to achieve the best image quality in my project. I also want you to realize that once you select the Beautify script and add it to your main camera, you can already start seeing visual changes right here in your main camera. For the explanation of the asset to be easier for you to understand, we are going to divide all its options in categories. We have the first one, which is general settings, image enhancements, tune mapping and color grading, lens and lighting effects, and finally, artistic choices. I am going to start by explaining to you the general settings category and all its features. In the quality feature you have three options, by selecting the best quality option will adjust the Beautify settings for you to achieve the best image quality inside the project. The best performance option allows Beautify to set its settings to get the best performance for the game. And finally the basic option will give you basic settings resulting in a better optimization for your game. But for the purpose of this video I am going to be selecting the best quality option for you to properly see all the visual effects that you can get with Beautify. Before going to the explanation of the next option inside the general settings, I would like you to go to compare mode and activate it. And that way you are going to see at the right of your screen the changes that are taking place by making changes inside the Beautify script. And then to the left of the screen, you are going to see what your game would look like if you won't use the Beautify script. By activating the compare mode option, then you can also change the angle of the middle line and also the width of the line. Super Sampling proposes us to go beyond the resolution of the screen and render the graphics at a higher resolution than the one accepted by the screen itself. A value greater than 1 makes Beautify render camera into a bigger target and downscales it before applying effects to produce a higher quality image. Thanks to the preset option, you can choose preset configuration made by Beautify and you have 5 options to choose from. You can choose a soft configuration, you can choose a medium configuration, the third one is a strong configuration, then you have an exaggerated one and I want you to see that by choosing them you can already start seeing changes inside the screen of your main camera. If you choose the custom option, you can make your own configuration and when you finish it, you can come here in the profile option, hit create and it will create a profile that you can choose in further projects that you are going to do and by doing so, you will save a lot of time for the next project because you won't have to start from scratch a new configuration of Beautify. The last feature that we have inside the general settings category is shader options 
which allows you to disable different options inside the Purify script and also we delete the lines related to it, resulting in a faster compilation of the game, but also in a better performance and optimization of the project. So when you finish the video, you can consider which of these options you can disable for your project. Finally, if you scroll down to the bottom of the shader options, you can enable the anti-aliasing feature. The second category of the Beautify asset is image enhancements and the first option that we have is the sharpen option. Sharpen enhances the details of the entire image by improving the local pixel contrast by providing a global focusing effect. Our unique sharpen algorithm provides an excellent image with very good performance. It also includes numerous options to customize this effect depending on the skybox Find objects such as cables, bright areas or dimming when the camera moves, increasing the motion blur effect. This effect improves the apparent resolution of all textures. If you want to have more control over the sharpen feature, you can expand it and then in the first option, the mini maxing depth allows us to choose the depth range where sharpen will be applied. If we decrease the maximum depth, the skybox will remain intact while increasing the minimum depth has an effect similar to depth of field. The depth falloff feature allows you to make a gradient between the sides that have the sharpen feature enabled and the sides that don't. The luminous relaxation option allows you to make sharpen be subtler on high contrasted areas. The clamp option will make it easier for you to have more control over the sharpen effect. The multiplier that we have right here is a general one and the clamp option is a more focused one. Finally, the motion sensibility option allows us to reduce the flickering in our camera whenever we move around and we have the sharpen option enabled. Dithering is a technique used to simulate colors or shadows. The basic concept behind this technique is to add noise or additional pixels. Dithering adds random pixels patterns to improve image quality and avoid banding. By default, this option will be applied to the entire image and thanks to its minimum depth option, we can calculate from what value the detouring function will be applied. For example, setting this value to 0.99 will only affect the skybox. The anti-aliasing option included in Beautify softly blurs the edges of the objects while preserving the rest of the image crisp. It doesn't have impact on performance because it's integrated in the final pass. You can of course combine Beautify with other anti-aliasing methods. If you expand the anti-aliasing option, you can change the depth threshold feature and by increasing this, you'll get a more dramatic effect of the anti-aliasing feature. The third category is the tune mapping and color grading category. Tune mapping is a photographic process that consists of enhancing the number of tones in an image so that we can see at the same time its mid-tones, its darkest tones and its brightest tones reducing the overall contrast which is mitigated by so much variety of shades. The default tune mapping setting that we have selected is linear which means that no tone map operator is applied. For the purpose of this video I am going to be selecting the second one which is Academy Color Encoding System and once we choose it we can start changing the exposure of our scene. You will also be able to change vibrance which improves pixel color depending on the saturation and of course you can also play with the contrast feature depending on what you need in the project. Daltonization is a process performed by the computer that allows people with color vision deficiencies to distinguish a range of detail they are otherwise excluded from perceiving. I want you to see that by increasing the Daltonize option the colors inside the game are merging resulting in a better visual perception for our users. Finally, the lookup texture feature allows you to add a 2D texture that has color grading information, for example, like the one that I have right here inside the assets folder. And then the only thing that you will have to do is to enable this feature, drag this texture right here, and the information color grading that has inside will be implemented inside our project. The fourth category that we have is the lens and lighting effects and the first options that we have is the bloom option that will produce fringes of light extending from the borders of the bright areas contributing to the illusion of an extremely bright light overwhelming the camera or eye capturing the scene. 
you'll see that if I activate the bloom option, the objects inside my project that have light or are related to it will start blooming from the edges. If you expand the bloom feature, the first option that you have is the layer mask that allows you to create a specific layer for different objects of your project that you want them to be affected by the bloom effect. So for example, if you only want this bulb right here to be affected by the bloom effect, you will have to create a layer for it and then you will have to choose that layer that you created for the bulb right here in the layer mask option. With the next two options you can play with the intensity of the bloom effect and also with the threshold of this intensity. And finally an interesting option is the reduce flicker option that if we select it as you can see will reduce flickering for the objects that are being affected by the bloom effect. The next feature inside the lens and lighting effects is the anamorphic flares that will add specular light strikes to your scene and if we select it you will see the changes right here. If you expand this option, the first thing that you can do is to choose a specific layer for the anamorphic flares to be affecting only the objects that have selected this specific layer right here. Of course you can play with the intensity and threshold of this intensity. As you can see the anamorphic flares inside the scene are presented horizontally, but if you want it to be vertical you have to enable this option right here. And of course you have the reduce flicker option that if you enable it you will see that it will reduce the flicker inside the objects that are affected by the anamorphic flares. To properly explain to you what you are going to get with the next feature I switched to a demo scene that we have inside the beautify folder and the name already explains to you what you are going to get once you enable it which is sound flares as you can see it right here inside my scene. And of course after activating this feature you can expand it and the first thing that you'll have to do is to choose the main sand that you have inside the project. As you can see I have already selected mine right here. Then you can change the global intensity. You can also change the tint which is the color that you will get from the sun flares. With this option right here you can change the sun intensity. This feature will let you change the sun disk size. By default the objects inside the scene that have a collider will cover the sound flares effect but if you want them to stop doing that you will have to create a specific layer for them and then you have to choose that specific layer right here in the occlusion mask. The corona feature will let you play with the settings of this race right here and you can start playing with the length, also the number of strikes that you have. These blurred circles that you see right here are the ghost of the sun and you can start playing with them by expanding the first one for example and you can change the size of it. The offset option will allow you to choose where you want the ghost to be positioned inside the scene. And finally you can increase and decrease the brightness value. The halo option is the one related to the rainbow that you can almost see right now but we are going to make some changes for you to properly see what they mean. For example you can change the offset of it, you can of course play with the amplitude and finally the intensity option will allow you to increase and decrease the halo intensity. The next feature will allow you to give a lens dirt effect to your camera and as you can see if I activate it you can already start seeing the lens dirt effect. If I expand it you can also change the dirt texture, you can play with the threshold. And finally with the intensity. To explain the next feature I switch again to a demo scene that we have inside the beautify folder and the next option that we will explain is the depth of field. Depth of field is the distance between the nearest and the farthest object giving a focused image. Enabling this option will produce a photography effect where the target object remains focused while the background and foreground looks blurred. So if you expand this option right here you can choose the object that you want to be focused on. In my case I am focused on the sphere that you have right here and you are going to see that when the sphere is going to get close to me the horizon is going to get blurred and once the sphere is going to get far away again the horizon is going to get back to the way it was before. I play my scene for you to properly see this effect and as you can see the horizon is getting blurred once the sphere is getting close to me. And also the horizon is getting back to what it was before once the sphere object is getting far away. To properly explain the next feature which is eye adaptation, we switch back to the demo scene that we had to explain the sound flares and by enabling this option 
allows you to achieve a luminous visual effect whenever user's point of view changes from dark sides to illuminated sides. And as you can see, I am in plain mode right now and if I switch from this dark point to a luminance point, you will see that my eyes will adapt to the luminance effect. I will do it once again for you to properly see this effect, so I will go to a dark side and then I switch back to a luminance side. If you expand this feature, you will have the option to choose the exposure range where you want eye adaptation effect to be shown to. The last two options allow you to change the speed at which you want the eye adaptation to take place. And for example, if I change the light adapt speed to a value of 0.3, you will see that the eye adaptation effect to luminance will take more time to process and you will see it by doing directly inside my scene. As you can see, it takes more time to process the adaptation to light. The parking effect is the tendency of the peak luminance sensitivity of the eye to shift toward the blue end of the color spectrum at low illumination levels as part of the dark adaptation. In consequence, reds will appear darker relative to other colors as light levels decrease. So if I activate the parking effect, you will see that the rug that I have right here will have the tendency to go into a bluish color and whenever I switch to illuminated area, the bluish color effect will be gone. I am going to hit play for you to properly see the effect and as you can see I get a bluish color effect to the rug and then if I switch back to illuminated area we lose that effect. Of course if you expand this option you can play with the shift amount and threshold amount and if you increase them you will get a more dramatic visual of this effect. And now we are back to our Sally's home scene where we are going to explain the last category which is artistic choices and the first thing that I would like you to do is to disable the compare mode to properly see the full screen. The first option that you have is the vignetting option and if you enable it you will see a vignette around your screen. If you expand it you will get more options that you can play with. You can change the color of course. You can play with the second option right here that will give you a fade out effect to the whole image of the screen. The third option will allow you to give a blink effect that is a very good one for horror games. The second feature inside the artistic choices is the frame feature and if you enable this you will get a frame around the screen and also you can change the color. The outline feature allows you to give a color border to the objects inside your project and as we did before with frame and vignetting you can also change the color of this outline. You can also enable the night vision effect and of course you can change the color but for the purpose of this video I am going to leave it for default green. The thermal vision feature allows you to get a thermal vision effect and as you can see the objects inside my scene that are warm are being affected by this effect. The blur feature right here allows you to get a blur effect on the screen and of course if you expand it you can play with the intensity. The pixelate feature allows you to give a pixel effect on your screen which is a very good feature for people who want to create retro games. And finally the last option that we have inside artistic choices is downscale. The purpose of this option is the opposite to super sampling, reduces image resolution to improve performance. This feature is very useful for people who like creating games for mobile, increasing the frame rate of the game on these devices. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget that if you have any doubt related to it, you can contact us. I will be gladly expecting you in next video tutorials of our assets.